Hi everyone. So I thought I'd do a demonstration today of installing Graphite Server on your own VPS. I have a lot of questions about, uh, or I've had a lot of questions from people about setting up Graphite, whether I prefer packages or source or uh, Python pip or whatever the case. By and large, I usually install from a combination of source and configuration management like Chef or Puppet. Whatever you use is fine. I have no particular preferences or whatever my preference is not important. But I do generally recommend doing it from source versus some third-party packaging. I know there are folks out there that, that do try to keep up with RPMs or devs, but unfortunately they tend to be you know, individuals working uh, on their own, and there's no guarantee that they're going to continue to develop them or to maintain them over time. So generally speaking, I like to go with source uh, and to make it easier. Obviously, it helps to have some kind of configuration management system in place, but that's a discussion for another screencast. So for today's example or demonstration, what we're going to do is I'm going to use an Ubuntu 10.04 distribution running on Rackspace Cloud uh, just because I have an account there and it's pretty quick to launch a new VPS. So I've just go ahead I've just deployed a new server. I haven't even logged into it yet but um, we're gonna go ahead and walk through the steps for setting up your own. Okay partially because this is an older distribution, but by and large, anytime you boot up a new VPS like this, you want to go ahead and make sure you update it. So I'm going to go ahead and apt get update. apt get dist upgrade. Now this is going to take a while, so we're going to let this finish, reboot the server, and we'll be back in a moment. Okay, our server is back now, so let's go ahead and log back in again. And we have a fresh server here. So the first thing we want to do is go ahead and install our dependencies. Now based on your distribution of choice, these will obviously differ in both in versions and the actual package names. This is the list of packages that we'll need for specifically for this version of Ubuntu. And you'll see that we've got the uh, Python, Python Cairo dependencies. We've already got Python 2.6 installed by default. Uh, we're going to need Django and Django tagging, uh, Python Twisted, Zope interface, font config, Apache, of course. Uh, we'll need a mod WSGI for Apache and Python. Um, the PySQLite 2 driver for the um, SQLite 3 database, that, or the file system based database that we're going to use. And then the simple JSON module for Python. And we're also going to need Git core because uh, since we're dealing with source, we're just going to go ahead and do a Git checkout from GitHub. So let's go ahead and install these packages. So the next thing we're going to do is go ahead and check out the repositories that we're interested in. Uh, within Graphite, there's three primary components. There's um, there's Graphite Web, which is the web interface. Uh, it's built upon Django. There's Carbon, which is the listener. Well, it's actually the listener. It does other things as well. It does aggregation. There's Carbon Relay. But first and foremost, it's primarily the listener where you're going to send metrics to it. It's going to cache them temporarily, and then it will write them out to the Whisper file format. Whisper is the third component. I mean, if you've ever used RD, um, time series database before. It's very similar to that. It has some minor differences, but Whisper is Graphite's native on disk format. So let's go ahead and grab our repositories from GitHub. Okay, now we're going to go into each of the three repository directories that we just checked out and we're going to, or sorry, that we cloned, and then we're going to check out the specific version that we're interested in, which is 0.9.10. Once we've done that, then we're going to run the Python installer for each of the different components.
Actually, before we run the install for the, the Graphite Web component, we can go ahead and uh, test our dependencies. And we get a few warnings here, but nothing that we need to be really concerned with that warns us that we don't have the memcache module available. We're not going to set that up right now. We also don't have the LDAP module available. Don't need it. And then the TX AMQP, which is only if you're going to use the AMQP messaging bus for sending metrics. And we also are not going to need that as well. So let's go ahead and run our installer for the Graphite Web. And so all of our components are installed. Now we need to go through our post install configuration and file permission setup. So let's jump into the Graphite configuration. Um, as you notice, it installs Graphite into Opt Graphite by default. There are a lot of options that you can use to override this behavior. If you haven't looked at it already, you should check out the official documentation for Graphite. Uh, in here, there's the installing Graphite page. Uh, it covers all our dependencies. And then if you scroll down to the installing graphite section and looking for the installing from source, uh, you see it covers the git repos. But in particular, a lot of the options you can pass to the install command as far as the prefix and the different install directory. So I'm not going to cover all these today, but if, you're, if you need to have a custom installation locations, you can use these flags for that. So by default, we have a number of example configuration files that we can use. And the ones that we're interested in are carbon.conf, storage schemas.conf, and then our WSGI configuration. So let's start off with carbon.conf. Really the only thing that we're gonna to need to change in here is the user. By default, this is unset, and it means that it's going to run as whoever starts it. In our case, we're generally starting in these as root, so we don't want to give it root permission. So we're gonna go on, later on, we're gonna create a carbon user just for this service. That's really the only setting what we're gonna set right now, so let's go ahead and save that. And let's do our storage schemas. take a look, quick look at this file, but we're not going to make any changes. These are fairly same defaults. You'll want to make changes for your specific organization, but for right now, we're going to leave them. Maybe in a future video, we'll cover, cover some of the storage retention stuff, but for right now, we're going to skip over that. And lastly, we're going to install the WSGI configuration. And take a quick look at that. Okay. The only thing that we're really going to do in here is disable this search index stuff. And let's go ahead and save that. Okay, so let's head over to our Apache configurations and set that up. Okay. So what we need is we need a default, we need a virtual host configuration for the Graphite servers. So let's, actually I have a gist set up. Um, there's a default one in, included in the source for Graphite Web. And we can see that, let's see, find root Graphite Web, grab example. Here we go. You can take a look at that. This is a fairly same configuration as well. The only problem is that they have a lot of WSGI stuff enabled that we might not need. Otherwise, it's pretty basic. If you do leave this one in place, you have to make sure that you set this Django root value accordingly. In my example, uh, we've already got that. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna open up sites available and stick graphite in there. And then we're gonna jump over here and grab my gist. And I will link this on the video uh, in the comments probably. So just keep an eye out for that. And let's see, we want. And we'll take a quick look at this. So if you'll notice, we're going to run this on 443. Because we're going to be using basic auth, obviously we want some, some encryption. So we're just going to use the default certificate files 
We don't even have to make those. We can use the ones that are already included. Apache logs. This tells Apache where to find the WSGI configuration. This tells Python where to find the Django media. And then our just our basic Apache configurations directory, directives, and location. This actually will we'll be using for our basic auth. So let's grab all of this, jump back to our terminal, save that. Now we'll want to create a symlink to that configuration file in our current directory. So now this will be in this virtual host will be enabled. Next we'll want to jump into the mods enable directory and we'll want to enable our SSL modules. And as I mentioned, we're gonna be using basic auth, so we'll want to set up an HD password file as well. Okay, with all that done, we should have our Apache ready to ready to rock. So let's go ahead and restart Apache. And we can verify that it's running. And good, we can see that it is. So now that we've got all our Apache services set up, we can go ahead and jump over to Graphite and set up our Graphite database and make sure all of our file permissions are correct. So now we're going to run the manage.py script that Graphite includes, and we're going to run it with the sync db option. And what that's going to do is it's going to set up our initial database, and it's going to prompt us for some answers or setting that up. Okay, so we're going to answer here that we do want to create a super user. For now, we're going to go ahead and use the admin user. It really doesn't matter. It's not a system user account, but I just don't like to reuse the root username. Okay, and now that our Graphite database is set up, we're going to go ahead and fix some permissions. If we take a look at inside opt Graphite, we can see that the storage directory is owned by root. We're going to want to go ahead and change that so that it's owned by the Apache user, which is in, in this case www-data. We're not going to want to do a recursive chone, we just want to chone the actual directory itself. Next, we'll want to actually change the user or the owner and group permissions for the Graphite database itself. So let's jump over to Opt Graphite Storage. We can see what's in here. So a lot of our storage data, the Whisper files, any application level logs, and later on if you want to start doing RD files, those are going to be in here in the Opt Graphite Storage directory. As you can see, we've got our Graphite DB, which is just a SQLite database file. So we're going to go ahead and chone that. And we're also going to chone recursively the log directory. And this will allow Apache to write out any logs that it needs. Generally speaking, you'll see info log and exception log under the web app directory. Okay, so now that we've done all this, let's just take a look at Apache real quick and see if the application is loading for us. So let's grab our IP address from ifconfig. And let's open that up in the browser. Making sure that we use HTTPS. Okay, and we expected this warning because we're using the snake oil certificate. Let's give it our credentials, in this case demo demo. and voila, we have a running graphite. Now of course, we haven't actually started carbon yet, so we're not gonna have any metrics to look at, or graphs for that matter. 
but we do have our composer, we have our navigation tree, so it looks like everything is generally working as far as Graphite Web is concerned. So now that we have that done, let's go ahead and get our carbon stuff running. So let's add our carbon group and user. And I'm just going to use 999 as our GID. And then let's add our user as well. And for our shell, we're going to do bin false, so it can't be logged in as. And our username, carbon. And since we're using an alternate user, we'll need to make sure that we set up permissions accordingly on the Whisper directory. So let's go ahead and chone that recursively. And we're also going to do that for RD. We're not actually going to be doing any RD storage right now, but in the future, if we do, we're going to need the right permissions set there. So let's go ahead and do that so we don't forget it. And that looks about right. So with that done, let's go ahead and start up our carbon listener. And we can see we're only launching a single instance. It just chooses the first alphabetical character as its uh, ID. And we can see that here it stores it as carbon cache-a.pid, the PID file. 3748 which should match up with our process, which it does. So in a minute or so, we should actually see Carbon writing out its own internal metrics that it creates. And there we go. Here's our Carbon directory. We only have a single agent. It's named after the host name of the box. And then the dash A was, of course, the alphanumeric character representing the carbon cache instance. And there's our metrics. So if we jump back to Graphite Web, reload, you should be able to see some metrics now. I see we don't have much to look at yet, but if we want to take that down to five minutes, we should actually start to see some data right here. Okay, I think that's going to cover it for today. If you have any questions, feel free to add them to the comments or send them to my Twitter account, Obfuscurity. Hopefully we'll have some more videos in the coming weeks and months, in particular maybe setting up CollectD to send to RRD metrics, I'm setting up Tassio or Descartes. If you have any particular requests for future screencasts, please let me know. Thank you.